We're back again. It's a special edition weekend episode. Yeah. That's what we're doing for the people because we missed a few days and uh, we let ourselves down. We let our families down. <laughs> we let the internet down. Yeah. But that's okay because now we get to make up for it and we have some interesting things to talk about. And we're going to kick it off with really an absolutely banana town type of story here. You've seen the folding display phones. You've seen the, uh, what else do we see? Uh, swiveling. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, rollable. Uh huh. Somebody showed off. Uh, it's been a lot of things. There's been quite a few companies attempting to well, discover the next big thing, you know, mm-hmm. the next big trend. I'm wearing new headphones as well. You are. I thought that these were a little more low key, very little branding. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay. I might get squeezed and have to go back to the Sennheiser. We'll see what happens. Did you want to let people know what they are? Yeah, it's a company called III. And I know it's funny to say it. I've actually heard some people on YouTube say AI, 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 because they just don't want to say I, I, I. I don't even know how to spell it. It's AI, AI, AI. Yeah, there you go. I don't actually know the way they imagine it being pronounced. And I think these headphones are popular amongst DJs. They're very lightweight. They're modular. You can kind of pick and choose the uh, variety of components on there. Mm. The TMA-2. And this is their new... Uh, their new setup, I think it's called HD or something. And so it has these like sort of microfiber ear cups okay. and a different driver unit. They're top, the top of the line one, but you can, and they have a new wireless headband. It's all modular. You can, I could be like, I want to try out some of these different ear cups or I want to try out some of these different driver units. And these things just click right off and you can throw the other ones on. It's a lot going on, like warm sound, punchy sound, neutral sound, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Dope. See what I'm saying here, Will? Yeah, I'm excited to try mine. Yeah, I gave you the box, but what what, what happened? Why didn't you put them on? I need to make it. Yeah, it's not. They the, come it, in like modular parts. It's really fast. Okay. It's uh, it all it all clicks together like Lego. It's kind of fun actually. You pick your cable, and it's kind of fun actually. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see how it goes as far as being a headphone here on this all show. Right, all right. So far, so good. Anyway. Crazy smartphones, crazy folding, flapping, twisting, turning, rolling. Everybody's looking for the next big thing. Well, TCL is now experimenting with a foldable and a rollable in the same device. (laughs) What's better than folding and what's better than rolling? Folding and rolling. Can it fold your laundry too? Together. It cannot do such a thing hate to break it to you we have some sketches and some renderings of what this might be or how this might work they're calling it the dragon hinge oh look at this thing i don't even what am i even looking at you know zigging and zagging it zigs it zags it can make a little stand it can lay flat i mean essentially what's trying to happen here is the same as everywhere else you're trying to make a tablet and a phone in one thing and i guess there's going to be a lot of experimentation before somebody figures out exactly how it should be done. And so in this particular sketch here, they're like, well, we're going to do everything. You can mm-hmm. bend and flip and flap and twist and turn and roll. And that's what this thing looks like. The company is developing a device that can be expanded from a smartphone into a small tablet by unfolding the screen as these images show. It will use a foldable display and TCL's Dragon Hinge, a multi-gear hinge, that the Chinese company believes will enable it to build a variety of foldables. So they may use such a hinge on multiple devices. TCL plans to show off renderings of the the device during an event in mid-April. And at the same time, it'll unveil its 20 series phones, which it teased all the way back at CES. And there's a color uh, rendering of what this might be. So you would have... The hinge is not unlike folding hinges that we've seen companies like uh, 
Roy Royal Royal with, Flex Pie with cheese with cheese. Uh, not unlike that, but then the key piece here is the rolling aspect, which is on the other side. And this is something we haven't seen in a consumer product yet. At least I haven't seen. Has not shown up in the studio. The the rolling one. And I don't know. It's just so it's so wild and crazy that I would want to check it out. You know what I mean? It's, it's wild and crazy. I screened the body ratio too. <laughs> if that's the case. <laughs> It nah, has that with it, too. They, there's no way to deliver it looking exactly like that. But it certainly, I mean, look, this stuff is very thin. Uh, there's some attributes to the folding, dis folding displays that, like, they just are so punchy with the OLED. Mm -hmm. And, but, yeah, I mean, we got to we gotta see if this makes any sense to fold and roll at the same time. Now, interestingly, the other company that showed off a rolling phone was LG at CES as well. And they made it, a, I guess, a part of their presentation where they had, uh, I just remember the video clip with the superimposed video and the rolling. Yeah, I remember this clip from the press conference. And so you sort of felt like you would see the rolling thing from them. Mm. But then you got all these rumors that LG is about to bounce on the smartphones. Right. That they're, you know, it's not going so well and... Uh, at one point they were looking for a buyer for that business and then they were like, yeah, I might not happy. Maybe we just, uh, close up shop when it comes to that, which obviously would be unfortunate. And they're one of the most experimental. So you would hate to see it cause it's, well, it's tough to get excited in this space. It's a lot of very similar designs and, uh, form factors and things like that. So when they did the LG wing remember that thing yeah i mean that was just fun to work with i gotta say yeah they tried something it new. was just fun to work with because i gotta work with these things <laughs> yeah yeah so do you okay. yeah by the way you got the iced tea going on over there yeah and starbucks yeah i just got a question about it so uh this is this is the famous thing that, do, that they do with the iced tea they put the lemonade in there as well and i just want yeah. i want to know your feelings about that uh well it is very light right and it's refreshing it's meant to I be refreshing yeah. see my kids love that thing but then when i order it i'm always like do i want to get the lemonade in there as well because it you know it gets kind of sweet and it's a treat kind of yeah you know but and then the tea there's not much tea flavor that can punch through lemonade right so just a consideration. I just want to get your take. Uh, yeah, it's refreshing. I would say a summer drink. Look at you. You know, making summer drink re recommendations because it's right around the corner. Yes. Very nice. Today's sponsor is HelloFresh. Speaking of summer, fresh summer, how about some summertime meals that are better than whatever it was that you were planning? Delicious. That's how it works over there at HelloFresh. Listen to this, Will. With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's nice. why it's America's number one meal kit. Here are three options in front of you, Will, and we're going to do what we would normally do here and put you on the spot. And... Force you to choose mm. between Cheddar Wonder Burgers and Old Bay Fries, Tex-Mex Pork and Pepper Enchiladas, or Creamy Chive Chicken with Lemony Rice and Dijon Apples Salad, which that one, by the way, the last one I just said, yeah. is Calorie Smart and Lightning Prep, 30 minutes. There's I just, want, I just want to make sure. Option. I just want to make sure we, okay. I put in those factors. Right. Yeah. But well, I, but also, oh, I should also put in the Cheddar Wonder Burger is showing a Hall of Fame badge. Uh -huh. So I had to put that in there as well. Well, I've tried both of these. No, you have not. I have, yeah. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> and I can't go, I, I I would always go with the burger. It's, right. there's something with the bun. It's mm. delicious. Mm. Um, I think it's brioche. It looks like it also has a caramelized onion component, yes. which I'm always a fan of that as well. Big fan. So... 
So I would go with this for sure. The Good Hall time. of Famer. Willie Do's recommendation, Hall of Fame selection, Cheddar Wonder Burgers. You could make it yourself. Actually, they got uh, 25 plus recipes to choose from each week. Something for everyone to enjoy. All recipes designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. Go to HelloFresh.com slash LouLater12 and use the code LouLater12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. 12 free meals, including shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash LouLater12. Don't forget the code LouLater12 so that you get those 12 free meals and so that they know that we're the ones that sent you over there. Remember, HelloFresh is America's Number one meal kit. Did you know that well? Mm -hmm. Well, now you do. GameStop is going to start selling GPUs. And I think it's a fantastic move if you can sell GPUs. But you can't sell GPUs. No. Because no one can sell GPUs. Because GPUs don't need to be sold. They sell themselves. Where, sure. Wherever a GPU finds, it, finds itself has already got a buyer. Mm -hmm. It can't even make it to the store. It's bought, right off bought the and sold press. seven times. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This dude's waiting right at the door. Uh -huh. uh, I don't have to tell you about the whole GPU fiasco. It's well known. Well known. Mm -hmm. But this is one of the ways, and this is something GameStop should have done sooner. PC hardware? Yeah, why not? What's going on here? A lot of towns don't have a place to, a local place for PC hardware in a pinch. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I understand you got Amazon and all this, but sometimes you need some PC hardware in a pinch. Sure. I would give a shout out Canada Computers. Shout out. <laughs> because that's our PC hardware in a pinch around the yeah. corner. Yeah. They're all over the, all over the place, Southern Ontario. Uh huh. And no, nah, I guess I'm telling GameStop to get into the same business. So maybe not shout out Canada. You know what I'm saying? Because they're like, well, hey, I thought we were doing that. And oh. it's tough times right now. I thought we were doing that. But oh. then. We have EB games, right? Yeah, but it's the same thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. And they don't have any, you know what they were trying to do? They're like, okay, we got the collectibles. Right. They, and then at one point they were like, okay, we got the, uh, we're going to be an internet cafe, a uh, place for game, hang, gamer yeah, hangouts. 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 And yeah. then, and then, and then they were like, and then they were like, no, 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 we're just going to be a meme stock. Uh huh. Yeah. They had a meeting. They're like, I don't know if you guys know what this <laughs> thing called Reddit, but. Uh, we got to get in there and we're all short. We're all shorted and whatnot. So this is our our new identity for a bit. But I got to say, from a marketing perspective, the meme stock status has just elevated in the public consciousness the brand. It, it does represent an opportunity that can be taken advantage of where nobody was talking about GameStop mm -hmm. and then everybody was talking about GameStop. You don't want to lose the moment. Yeah. Like you don't you want to take event is that is that M and M? What 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 is that? Uh, lose yourself in the moment. Is that what it is? Or I don't, don't lose yourself in the moment. Yeah, I don't know what it is, man. We should know this. Palms are sweaty. Mom spaghetti. I mean, it's a really famous thing. If you had one shot, one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted in one moment, would you capture it or just let it let it slip? Okay. There's vomit on his sweater already. Mom spaghetti. He's nervous, but on the surface he looks calm and ready to drop bombs. But he keeps on forgetting what he wrote down. The whole crowd goes so loud he opens his mouth, but the words won't come out. He's choking. How everybody's joking now. The clock runs out. Time's up. Over. Blah. Snap back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to take advantage of the moment. You got to capture sure. it. GameStop got to capture it, like Eminem said. Just embrace it. Just just make sure that they're here right now and ready to go and making moves because they're on blast. GameStop and is B Rabbit. That's right. Okay. Wait, who's B Rabbit? I don't even remember. It's Eminem. Oh, is he B Rabbit in the movie? Yeah. Or is that or is that one of his tiles? <laughs> uh why is he why can't he just be uh Marshall Mathers, Mathers. in the movie? I don't know. Okay, your Will's checking it. He's fact checking because he doesn't want to be called out on this. Yes, he's B Rabbit. Uh, I was just joking around with you, Will. That's all. Terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Who's V Rabbit? <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I trusted you. Okay. I trusted you. I had to. Check I trusted you. I wasn't really sure. 
I trusted you a little bit, like 1% or something. Okay. Anyway, you came through big on that. But yeah, it's a story about his life, but I guess it had a fictional, some obviously fictional elements, fictional yeah. names, a few things going on like that. Anyway, what I'm trying to get at over here is like, you're not always hot. So when you're hot, make it count. And GameStop was as hot as it had been as a brand name because of the stock thing. And then it's like, okay, make some announcements. It's like, show people what you're going to do now that's mm -hmm. different from what you've been doing because obviously there wasn't a tremendous amount of confidence in the company from an investment standpoint for a period of time. That's all that short business. Yep. And and tons of competition from players like Amazon and others. So you got to do a few things. And those first couple of things, they didn't really do the job, do the trick. So then you come with this GPU talk. And you know what else is hot right now? GPUs are hot right now. Mm-hmm. And people are going to know and keep track of anybody in the GPU business. So even if they sold out a stock right away, which they happen to do, mm -hmm. still people are going to be checking the site now. Yeah, that's a really smart move. Look, they're selling uh, PC cases, speakers, gaming peripherals. This is what it keyboard should sets. have been done a long time ago. That makes sense. Tons of sense. They may even need to get a few sponsorship deals, get in with the streamers, get on Twitch, get into the uh, game gaming competitions, competitive gaming and things. Sure. Hosted by GameStop. Hosted by GameStop. Uh, they could do like some sort of rewards program, like for the most hardcore types. Yep. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just giving you ideas right now. Yeah. These are free ideas. For sure. You should talk to Mr. GameStop. You know, you want to know something though? In, in my, I, I'm sure that everything I just said, they said it in the boardroom. They got the smart dude, uh, George Sherman. No, they got the other guy. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm sure George. Shout out George. I'm sure you know you're the CEO, or whatever. The other guy that just <laughs> he made the investment. The guy from what? Not uh, Chewy. Chewy.com. Yeah. The pet guy. The pet guy. <laughs> no, knew about the e-commerce. And it looks like he's already cracking the whip a little bit. He's, yeah. he's already getting things moving and going. And so um, with some luck and some inventory, they can become a destination. It's very exciting. I guess New Newegg doesn't like it, but anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that GameStop has is a, a rich history of being a place to trade things in. Now, it is a bit of a meme that they give you five bucks. Yeah. It is a bit of a meme what they pay you for your your used goods. But they have an opportunity in the PC space to potentially also buy your used hardware because it's you're already in the mindset of it as you upgrade, which is, that is a thing you commonly upgrade. Your PC hardware. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I think it's a good move. Mm -hmm. GPUs. Now you got one more place to check if there ever will be stock ever again one day, yeah. but also other PC hardware. So that's cool. Uh, Bose Frames Tempo. Have you heard of these things? How about that image from The Verge? Shout yeah. out. That's a full. That's a full TV. And you know what's the key about this image? Well, what's that? The reflection in the glasses. Hmm. Look where this. Look where she is. Mm -hmm. I mean, you need to be in a place like that. Yeah, I'm dying for it. That's a nice. Where is it like that right now? You must be on the west coast. Uh, on the northwest. Or something sure. like that. I don't know where you are right now in this picture, but or maybe it's just a press image. I don't know. <laughs> Take a long time. It doesn't look like it, though. Maybe it is. Anyway, it's about to look like that around here pretty shortly, and uh, we're going to take advantage of uh, some of that. Let's talk about these frames, though. What are, what are your thoughts on this thing where, you know, you got the headphone built into the sunglasses? Um, I don't mind them. You know, it sure beats uh, having another product that's just around. Have two in ones; it's always good. So you would you would consider? Okay, let me let me let, let's <laughs> let me go let me go a step further here. These are two hundred fifty dollars. Right, two hundred fifty dollars. Okay. Obviously, you can get sunglasses and have bones for two hundred fifty dollars. You can have you have both of them. Yep. This is a few dollars. Mm -hmm. Are you prepared to put 250 down to have them together? 
and then to really not have something that's as good as headphones and really not have something that's as good as sunglasses. You see, they're neither of them right, are right. as good at the thing. Yeah. But together, you're right. You consolidate. You you only have the one device, and I don't know. I, I it's a conflict for me trying to figure out the premise here. Like I have used some of these products. I even used the uh, the headphones noise conduction bone conduction bone conduction that's right yeah like i combined noise cancellation right, and bone yeah. conduction bone conduction headphones i used the i believe they were called like shock waves or something like that aftershocks aftershocks and anyway i was amazed what they were capable of doing considering nothing was in my ear i thought it was cool technology but I could never get to a point of thinking I want to replace my headphones because I still was missing that like kind of crystal clear audio experience. I mean, you could tell I've been through how many headphones on this show already in this seat already. Yeah. You understand. So maybe I'm a little too particular with it. But but also maybe if I was this, that's not, that's a look right there. That's you right there. That's a look right there. That's a... <laughs> Oh boy. Was that two years ago? Almost exactly. <laughs> Almost two. Oh, just over two years ago. That's funny. Good times. So that was a bone conduction sunglass from that company that we mentioned, Aftershocks. And uh, Bose has gotten into the space. Actually, their product doesn't look all that different. It might look ever so slightly better. A little matte finish on the side. Uh, but anyway, this uh, this review gives you some of the pros and cons as far as frame-based sound is concerned, they say it's the best they heard. Intuitive controls and Type-C charging. As far as the bad stuff goes, discomfort on large heads, so I'm out right away. Mm -hmm. I'm out of here on that. Bass can't match regular earbuds. Well, I figured that out in the five, six videos I've done on similar products. It's just not a substitute for regular headphones. It would be good for a podcast, right. things like that. And slight sound leakage, which is another thing I experienced with this technology in the past. So... Uh, anyway, I think uh, serves a purpose, but I think for the average person, two fifty, you gotta be a real outdoorsy type. Yeah, it seems like a hiker, fisherman, real outdoorsy type. You want to have the audio book playing as you're out there with the fly fishing, right? I mean, that actually sounds kind of relaxing because your ears aren't blocked and for sure, yeah. Just trying to paint a picture for you here, Will. Or I mean, she's hiking. I guess. Look, she got the straw in the backpack. Oh, yeah, she's definitely hiking. Do you have a straw in a backpack? I don't. <laughs> I don't think I do. I thought you might have been one of the, these guys. I would get one. Maybe this summer. You are one of those guys. <laughs> yeah, Maybe. Yeah. You, 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 With the bows. Uh, yeah, you could be a straw, in a, a straw in a backpack guy. Because you know why? Because you're into the mountain climbing or the rock climbing. Yeah. So you're close already. Yeah. And the snowboarding also brings you, those two together kind of bring you close to the straw in the backpack guy. <laughs> do you do mountain biking? If you add mountain biking, you're you're there. Yeah, I, that's that's something I don't do. wonder why that but is. But maybe. Yeah, why maybe. don't you do that, though? Seems right up your alley. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You're asking I don't these know. questions. I don't know. I might pick it up. I'm still. Did I just young. did I just hit a sore spot? <laughs> <laughs> I think eventually we'll see. You had a bad crash at one time. You're like, oh, you did. Yeah. Uh, oh, you did. I've never tried mountain bike biking before. What about mountain baking? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of that. <laughs> right up there, right in the mountain. All right. Anyway, okay. Yes. Uh, crazy times. Actually, speaking of guys who would. Uh, carry a straw you never thought gamers would be the type to carry a straw with them everywhere they go did you no well they are they're gaming they are usually at home right yeah i guess but you know razor has recently become more of a culture brand we were talking i guess last episode about how this mask they were trying to do this uh, what, what would you what, what would you call it? It's a protective filtration, active powered mask. Yeah, with RGB, of course. 
And that's not, that has, I mean, you're not going to wear that while you're gaming. No. But I've seen pictures in the past on social media that Razer would like repost or the CEO would repost of somebody gaming in public. And I think in certain places that that happens more frequently, Will. Oh, yeah? Where, I don't know, a person could actually be gaming in a coffee shop or something. I've seen these photos. Uh, I mean, I've never, I wouldn't do it. No. But you can. I suppose there's no reason you can't. I mean, assuming you're allowed in the coffee shop. Yeah. So maybe that, that's how this goes. Maybe that's how they perceive it, is that you're going to have this mask, your Razer laptop, your Razer mouse. And then... The razor and, and when you get to the coffee shop and you order to drink, they're going to pop open your razor straw out of the case and just like fully do it. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, it's it doesn't uh, hurt to try new products. Well, you know what the angle is right now is about and, and, I, and I hear this, by the way, is about straws in general. And the environment and this and that. Uh, right and and you know what it led what has led to uh, is the worst in the worst thing ever in the history the of, worst thing ever yeah it has led to the worst thing ever in the history of earth which is the paper straw i don't even enjoy all my enjoyment really have you tried a paper straw yeah just uh last night It gets to you, eh? It's, uh... What were you drinking with a paper straw last night? Oh, gosh. I don't remember now. Um, chocolate milk. You better drink it quick. Yeah. It starts to not become... No, you start anymore. drinking paper at a certain point. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. What should... <laughs> Anybody That's sign? Not fun. Anybody sign up for that? <laughs> I got a chunk of paper in my mouth. Cool, yeah. you know. So, yeah. Look, that. I don't. I, I understand the the plastic straw is uh, destroying everything. I understand, but uh, but but we got to do. We I I know there's a product because you know why? Oh, we talked about this before. What? You and I talked about this before. There is a product, a biodegradable product, which has a more plastic feel to it and actually does a great job of behaving like a regular straw, but is also good for the environment. And 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 and, and we need these companies to get on board, man. Is it the booster juice? Yes, straw? they have it. And I don't know if people weren't be, weren't believing me. People weren't believing it. I think it's made, I think it's like corn based. I don't know how they made it. The back to earth straws are made from, oh, you you were right there, oh. yeah, made from renewable plant-based materials that are also certified compostable as per ASTM D6400. It means that in 180 days, the straws will decompose to 90% CO2 and 10% biomass mm. in an industrial or municipal composter. So, so I remember talking about this previously in some real environmental types, some heavy hitters, where like it's not so simple because you need a real uh, heavy duty industrial process to get these things composting in that time. But I'm just saying, like I want this type of innovation very interesting to me. If we can find a way to, we can do a lot. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. Like with the type of stuff people are talking about. Oh, uh, Mars. We're gonna be there in five minutes, five years, whatever. Uh, you talked. To- but then it's like the straws. We, we can't figure out a straw. Like, yeah. we're, like we're using paper straws. Mm. And then you got this kind of technology. There's got to be a way to do it. So I'm just saying, man, like I know I know, I got all fired up over here. Like, do, like we use whatever straw. But anyway, that's what Razor was going for with this because they know the paper straw sucks. I believe that. Mm-hmm. I bet you the CEO right now, he's listening to this. He says, yeah, exactly. He probably, in that that that's not what's happening, but. But definitely by putting out a metal straw that goes in a little container, you are always ready to go. And if someone hits you with a paper straw, you're like, no, 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 I'm okay. I brought my own straw and it's stainless steel and it has a green snake on it. 
Yeah, and a pipe cleaner. Because cleaning straws is a yeah, nightmare. exactly. If you've ever tried it. So I think I just talked myself into this $20 metal straw. Apparently it's out yeah, of, why not? Apparently it's out of stock already. When fully extended, the straw measures 9 inches in length with a bottom inner, dia inner diameter of 0.23 inches and a weight of 10.7 grams. This is like, you know how everybody got into the... Uh, everyone like oh everyone started carrying a water bottle like it, it was like overnight it was the reusable water bottles mm -hmm. at first it was those clear ones and then then people got crazy with it and then it's like all kinds of metal ones and maybe the straw is next when brazers ahead of the curve over here yeah and make it look cool i'm surprised there's no rgb to be honest Mm. <laughs> or some sort of like light system. Well, then you gotta charge it up that's the problem now you're charging your straw or at least yeah. have like uv in there mm. the uv light to, <laughs> to make it electronic and See, then the, you add the rg the thing about the uv though is i mean you still gotta rinse this because you got particles you stick that in a smoothie yeah that's gross keep that in mind the yeah. uv isn't what's a uv gonna do to a uh, strawberry seed yeah not much mm -hmm. so anyway shout out razor they I mean they're just trying to doing everything yeah uh speaking of completely over the top gadgets i actually saw a few people talking about this on my social media the new dyson vacuum which has a laser built in okay to show you how filthy you actually are oh wow because this laser, it, it basically wraps around the dust particles on your floor in a way that a normal light would, wouldn't be able to see mm. or illuminate those things. Cool. And so you can go do a pass at a part of your floor and then know, okay, I got everything because the laser, I look at the laser, yeah. there's nothing there. Yeah, yeah. And your eyes wouldn't have been able to pick it up. But then it takes things to a completely different level. By actually measuring every particle captured. Mm. There's like a little tiny dish on the inside there. And each particle slams into it on like a microscopic level. Mm. And then that reading on the top display shows you the size and volume of all particles in four categories that you've captured. Wow. It's a level of clean you never experienced. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's super high tech. Man, what are people up to that they, you need to... I mean, I think it's cool, but am I going to? So you get to see the size of particles, and then what? What What do you do afterwards? I get. I think you get a, you have a feeling of uh, relief that you have, like kind of like a fitness tracker. Like how you look at it at the end of the day and it's like, oh, damn, I got 5,000, 10,000, sure. yeah. uh, whatever. Or you're on an Apple Watch and you're like, I closed my rings today. Yeah. This is like, I know roughly how dirty my house is, my floor, let's say, after a week or after a day or after five, whatever it is. And so I know what I'm looking to pick up numbers wise. I see. I know how many particles I want on my radar today. Okay. You're well, not, the, the lights are impressive. You're not happy about this. I, I use a Dyson. Yeah, okay. And it's great. Okay. The cordless, too. Okay. Yeah. But you feel like this is a gimmick or what? Well, I just feel like Dyson, they had a campaign where they had, like, the ultimate, the last uh, vacuum that they were going to make. Yeah. <laughs> and then two more models came after. No, man. Like, come on. Mm. You know how this goes, Will, when you're... When you're the legend in this space, you never really retire. You always fake yeah, retire. To me, you Dyson. always fake retire, and then you come back. But yeah. anyway, they're very happy with it. They got a whole video explaining everything it does, uh, the laser, the particle reading, and so forth. I don't know. I'm guessing, Will, there's some people that are just so pristine about how they do things. Can't you picture a type of person like in a very clean space that yes. is just going to really get some kind of buzz for sure. Out of watching all the particles get picked up. Yeah. And seeing a reading. and re There's somebody out there. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's many people, I bet. You know how many people watch cleaning videos on YouTube? Yeah. 
at one point it was huge. Or or detailing cars. Organization. But have you seen the, the, the detailing cars ones where they get the most disgusting oh, car? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Carpet then, cleaning the, too. E e exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it, it feels good. People are into things, man. Facebook is building Instagram for kids. Hmm. And uh targeted at kids under the age of 13. Kids won't tell you this, but apparently you're supposed to be 13 or older to use Instagram. Hmm. And there's other platforms like YouTube. They had a kids app for a really long time. And the aim there is to kind of uh, cater the experience to the young folks. And to, I suppose, kind of uh, move them away from just lying about their age and just signing up to, to, the big bad Instagram and just saying that they're uh, 18 years old or whatever, when they're not now for a long time, regulators have thought you're full of it. Facebook, you know, damn well that those are that who's lying and who's not based mm -hmm. on your behaviors. Like you guys know everything. Mm -hmm. You guys know more about me than I know about me. So don't tell me that you don't, you don't know about these kids signing up and they don't meet the criteria. Like for sure. You got all this traffic. Anyway, uh, point being is apparently they've been heard, those uh, concerns. And Facebook says, all right, fine, we'll do it. We'll put together this. Uh, and, and who knows, as far as like the future is concerned, people are going to want these users because like a 13-year-old becomes a 20-year-old becomes a... Trust me, I did it before. I've done it. Yeah. Like myself. Mm -hmm. It's hard to believe. Made it this far. Yeah. So part of it is that, and the other part of it is just, if the experience is more catered, presumably the individual has a better time with it, ends up uh, maybe feeling better after whatever that exposure is, because maybe some of the things that may have been too uh, intense or, I don't know, just not targeted at them can be avoided or something. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, anyway, apparently they're working on it. Here's a quote. We have identified youth work as a priority for Instagram and have added it to our H1 priority list. I mean, how many priority lists they got? H1. This is going to go on H1. Executives in Instagram plan to build a version of the popular photo sharing app that could be used by children under the age of 13. I'm excited to announce that going forward, we have identified youth work as a priority. Yes, uh, that's Instagram's vice president that said that. We will be building a new youth pillar within the community product group to focus on two things, accelerating our integrity and privacy work to ensure the safest possible experience for teens and building a version of Instagram that allows people under the age of 13 to safely use Instagram for the first time. So it's, it's actually a couple different problems. It's not just what you see in a platform. It's also the messaging stuff, the adults interacting in the, in the private messages with the children. Mm. Very strange. And Instagram was apparently working on that too. They're like, well, we're trying to figure out algorithms to determine right. like when that's happening and to identify the accounts that are frequently doing that. And, but it's, uh, it's obviously a difficult task. And so maybe having a completely separate app for this group could just be a better move all around. Yep. Uh, Volkswagen has a couple new details about its uh, electric micro, micro bus, the buzz. Look at this thing. Oh, so it's cool. a it's a throwback, you know yeah. what I mean? To uh uh what was it called originally? The uh just the VW bus? No. The Oh, here we go. Willie do we're gonna see uh how he attacks it from a search perspective. Uh I think it was just called the bus. I don't know. VW bus. Retro bus? No, I think it was just called the bus, man. I think it was just the VW bus, believe it or not. Anyway, whatever. Someone's yelling and screaming at us if it wasn't, but I think it was. Micro bus? Okay, sure. Oh, okay. Well, the name of the new one is the Buzz, and it's going to be all electric, which is what you would want, I guess, in 2021. The concept was first shown off all the way back in 2017, and they're having to delay it a little bit. Originally, I guess it was supposed to be 2022, which is quite close. It's going to be 2023 instead, as far as uh, getting a U.S. release. U.S. is only going to get the uh, 
passenger version of the van, there will actually, believe it or not, be a commercial version of that van hmm. for like work. Okay. What do you think about that as a work van? This seems like a party van. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Maybe, I mean, if you put a work paint job on it, could just look like a futuristic sure. work van. Uh, apparently, the entry level version will have rear wheel drive and 200 horsepower. And there will be a more powerful trim, which is going to be all wheel drive and 300 horsepower. And uh, apparently, this is going to be the first autonomous vehicle that cool. VW ever releases. So I don't know if you expected to see that in this vehicle, but cool autonomous throwback thing's going to drive itself. What do you think, Will? Can you see yourself one day cruising, cruising, taking a road trip in a in the buzz? Yeah, oh. I. Uh, one of my goals is to take one of these and drive it along the PCH. There you go. You know, the wow. coast. Yeah, I think that might be where that one's parked right now with yeah. the surfboards on top. So you you can just do the commercial. For sure, yeah. Yeah, they can just hire you because you already need to do that trip, and that's exactly where they would want to. Mine as well, right? Roll this thing up. Hey, that's that famous Porsche guy over there on the left. I think his name is Magnus. Uh, yeah, he has that. That guy has a crazy Porsche collection. One of the best that's out there. Uh, I just want to make sure I got Magnus his Walker. name right. Yeah, Magnus Walker. Very recognizable. He has a tremendous cool. Porsche collection. And as you know, VW is the uh, VW Group is the company that owns Audi, Skoda, Porsche, et cetera. Really, mm -hmm. really big company. And VW. So I guess he's helping them to promote it or launch it. Cool. Super futuristic looking thing. Very fresh and, and light, too. Look at the way the seat turns around in the front for a chat. Yeah. Definitely a party bus. That's cool. That guy's got like a desk or a cooler or a table or something. Yeah. Very nice. Fun. All right. How about this one, Will? I don't. I bet you haven't seen this before. If you've seen this before, you're really going to surprise me. Did you know there are some rabbits that only walk on two legs, the front two legs? Don't tell me you knew this. Or, what, no, you? I didn't. Oh, okay. Thank goodness. You know what? Wow, this, look at the eyes on this. Well, actually, that's a bit rabbit over here. Actually, it's a bit rude, Will, because. <laughs> Because actually, discrimination. Well, kind of. Because what you're looking what? at, well, what you're looking at here is a rabbit that actually has a type of genetic mutation. Oh, and so their uh, their signals are not firing correctly because of that mutation, and so uh -huh. the back legs don't really work that well. And and they 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 actually, if they're at a really slow speed, they will walk on all four legs. But when they really got to go, and the back legs aren't responding the way they should. They hop up on the front too, and they're actually a bit quicker like that. Oh, wow. But however, alongside this particular mutation is also a higher likelihood of uh, eye problems and blindness. Wow. Yeah. So. Sorry, rabbit. I I apologize. Tricks are for kids. Yeah. How did that definitely. go? Sorry. No. Uh, sorry, kid. No. Sorry, yeah, sorry, rabbit. Tricks are for kids. I, I sure, don't. You yeah. just said sorry, rabbit. I don't. Anyway, uh, wow, what a throwback! I totally forgot about that. That was like a breakfast cereal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe they still make it. I don't know what 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 it was. I can't remember. Anyway, so you see some examples of how this works, and believe it or not, there's actually a video down here, so you can see it in action. It's kind of crazy to see, especially it's the front legs and not the back legs. Check this out. Bang. And surprisingly balanced at doing it. Well, it would be like you walking on your hands, basically. Yeah. As your default way of movement. And it's just, uh, I mean, it's kind of impressive coordination. But yeah, it is because the back <laughs> legs are just not really uh, uh, functioning as they normally would be. Now, uh, the reason that these are still around, and I actually went down to the comment section and it got kind of interesting because people were like, wait a sec, wouldn't these... Rabbits just be picked off by the predators mm -hmm. because they're, yeah, kind they're of, yeah, pretty not slow. very agile. I don't know if you see, do you, do you have the rabbits in your neighborhood? You see them time to time? Yeah, sometimes. During yeah. During the summer. Yeah. At night. So what we see, in our neighborhood, is like tremendous rabbit activity. Oh. And uh, every so often you'll spook one and you don't even see it, but you spook it and that, mm -hmm. they can they can fly at times. Uh-huh. 
And, you know, they got that built in because it's all kinds of things want to eat them. It could be a coyote. I don't know. Maybe even a big bird is looking for that. Yep. So you start thinking, well, how did these, how are these ones still kicking around? And the truth is they're kicking around because the scientists got a hold of them and they want to study it. Hmm. And so they keep them uh, to a certain extent to do the, the genetic analysis and figure things out. So they, they still exist oh. from, from that perspective. Cool. So anyway, but like, I mean, hey, they, they, they move around, you know? Mm-hmm. They, they sometimes you see the dogs will lose a limb or something and they get the wheels or something mm -hmm. and they got a big happy face and their tails wagging yep and they move on with it mm -hmm. and they make the best of it they have a good time that's cool all right to wrap it up here we have a list of the 10 happiest countries in the world in 2021 now this is going to be, this is obviously controversial, like just because it's like, well, if you're not, if your country's not in here, you're like, hey, yeah, I'm super happy over here. Uh, or, or just like, yeah, this is difficult because it's like a questionnaire, it's like a survey. And who answers the survey? Well, it's not 100% of the population and it doesn't have any bearing on you personally. It's just, it's obviously based on averages and, sure. and and how people answered it and whatever else, but they do this every year anyways. And this is a weird time, so it's more subjective. Uh, the United Nations, I guess, does it, and uh, they they put this thing out called the World Happiness Report, which they first published in 2012, and it is conducted by the UN's Sustainable Development Solutions Network. The metrics it uses when surveying citizens in each UN member state include social support, personal and civil freedoms, life expectancy, income per capita, and levels of corruption, among mm. others. So these are the factors that exist in the questionnaire. And uh, so obviously, this particular study is going to give is going to have emphasis, have an emphasis towards the, uh, distribution. Mm -hmm of uh well-being because if you just pull the general public uh you, in, in certain communities you're gonna have too much contrast mm -hmm. there could be some people doing really really well and then there could be some people not doing so well right. which would skew your results so a lot of these countries have established themselves as having like a pretty static or uh uniform sure uh distribution of Distribution of wealth, distribution of uh, uh, opportunity, what, whatever you want to call it. And so anyway, I just want to put that part out there like just to give a little bit of context. Because the same, a lot of the same countries pop up on this list every single year. Mm. Uh, like all, those, all the Nordic countries pop up on there every single year. But we'll do a quick rundown, quick list here. Coming in at number 10 is Austria. Number 9 is New Zealand. Number 8 is Norway. 7, Germany. Six, Sweden. Five, the Netherlands. Four, Switzerland. I mean, look at the pictures they chose. I'm, 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 I'm yeah. getting happy just looking at them. Very scenic. Uh, three, Denmark. Two, Iceland. And one, Finland. Wow. Very Nordic. Yeah, very, very Nordic. And so I'll just give you a couple, a little breakdown, and then also some personal experience. So the happiest country in the world for the fourth year running is Finland, according to this uh, survey. And uh, apparently it's a, it's a high-income country. Well, not apparently. I mean, pretty evident. Uh, with, it, with a strong education system. And they're big into saunas and outdoor activities. Well, that's the reason. You got saunas? You're happy, And right? hiking? I mean, it's great, right? Wrong. You can't go wrong. So... I mean, there's been some studies around saunas, yeah, like that. It's like really good for you, and and some of these countries have a real strong sauna culture. Mm -hmm. And you know what else they have in some of these countries? Um, they don't mind being cold either. Yes, you see there's them, a contrast. You see them just be swimming in. Uh, there's that channel on YouTube. What's it? Do you remember the name of it? I don't know. We'll, we'll give a shout out when we'll find it off the air but it's a guy on youtube viral videos all he does he skates on thin ice 
in mm. just his bathing suit. Actually, you know what? Search it up right now. People are going to get mad that they didn't see it. Let's put skating on thin ice. Uh, not, not, you're going to have to scroll down. There it is, on thin ice 9. Okay, so he's in Norway, speaking of Nordic countries, and his name of his channel is Apitor or Apetor, A-P-E-T-O-R. And this guy does not mind the cold. I will tell you what. He'll, he'll, he'll take a dive right in there. He'll roll around in snow. He'll take a shot of vodka. It's no big deal well, in Norway. He's living life. Uh, see, he even cut his leg getting in and out of the ice. It doesn't. It didn't ruin his day. Mm. He's having a time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean this channel's out of control. By the way, I should say this channel's out of control. But you also know the guy uh, Wim Hof, yep, as well. And I believe he's from the Netherlands, so somewhat nearby. And same thing. It's like a weird, uh. Like putting the body through those extremes yes. of discomfort, the, the some weird contrast of the cold environment and the sauna and like the body having some sort of discomfort, I guess, or, or, or just tr triggering certain systems in the body for... Like fight or flight kind of situation or... I don't know. I mean, look, they study this stuff, and uh, Rhonda Patrick, you can yeah. listen to her stuff on saunas, and obviously it's all the rage to get cold in those cryo chambers. Like a mental and physical battle. Yeah, but I, I can just speak from personal experience of, uh, because it's cold enough here in the winter, and like spending extended sessions outside, maybe playing hockey on the, on the outdoor rink or something, it is a different feeling when you're cold oh boy. down to the bone, you yes. know? And these guys even colder up there in Norway, like yeah. So anyway, anyway, so they claim to be the happiness, uh, the happiest over there. Uh, they also ranked very high on the measures of mutual trust uh, that have helped to protect lives and livelihoods during the pandemic. So they kind of trust one another as well. Mm. Apparently, again, according to the report, coming in at number two is Iceland. Now I have personal experience. I've been to Iceland twice. You've been to Iceland once. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can comment on that. It is a, a very small population, right? You got uh, 350,000 people. So it's like, it's like a town. Yes. <laughs> the entire country. For sure. It's one Island. It's a, it, it almost feels like everybody knows everybody for real, mm -hmm. uh, which it would obviously 350,000 people. Very scenic. But funny enough, as it sounds like everybody's happy there, according to this thing, I met a bunch of youngsters that couldn't wait to get out of there. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, that's just what youngsters do. They assume that they got to, you know, take off and like, sure. and maybe it's an island thing or, and it's just, this is just my own experience. So it doesn't necessarily have to be, but I was, I got there and I, and I met some people during my trips and I said, uh, this place is amazing. Yeah. I was like, you guys got it made over here. Like, this is so cool. And they're like, yeah, can you take us back to Toronto with you? <laughs> and I was like, what? Really? And they're like, all, they're like, uh, you know, half the year it's dark and we sit on our inter on the internet. Mm -hmm. And they were being brutally honest. Now, I'm not saying that's what everybody does, but that's just what I was told. So that's kind of why I put the preamble at the beginning of like, how does a person perceive the, these questions around happiness and trust and things mm. like this? It's a very difficult thing to gauge because I'll say another one that doesn't show up on this list and won't show up on this list for a long time because of a variety of social issues and things like this. And just um, the stage that that country is at is India. What, the, everybody I met in India was so damn happy. Mm -hmm. I was like, my God, I, this is uh, a buzzing me up. Just meeting these people that are uh, so enthusiastic, just so alive. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to be on this list because they're going to get asked questions about their their uh, uh, so social and economic and things like this. But it's like, again, happiness, complex. Yes. You, you stop and think, like, is it these types of questions that the UN's going to ask you? Is 
is that going to be a good gauge of happiness and optimism in general? Mm -hmm. Uh, Or is it more, is there more nuance to it? Or you can ask yourself this on a personal level. What are the things that make you happy? And are they always related to things that the UN measures? Mm -hmm. Or is it sometimes intangible? Is it sometimes the amount of time you spend with close relatives or people you care about, or is it, uh, can it be things that don't show up in a survey or report? Another note here though, before we take off, apparently people dealt with 2020 pretty good in the way they answered this survey and they were feeling pretty optimistic going forward. Oh, okay. So how about that for a message? So, uh, shout out to every country on this list and every other country out there. Stay happy, stay optimistic.